right, everyone, let's start. Good morning, good morning. So now it's time to lock the doors. You are mine now for a minute, okay? So my name is Will Engman. I come from the Vardin team. I'm a Finnish guy. How many of you have heard about Vardin before? Wow, quite many, but still a few that haven't. So there's always a good audience when people don't know who, you know, what Vardin is. That's always good for me. Another question. As I'm a Finnish guy, how many of you have actually visited Finland? <laughs> awesome, awesome. Just what I thought, actually. So let's talk about Finnish people for a moment. So I'm going to teach you something about Finnish people, so you get around when you get there. So Finnish people are pretty proud, well, famous in one thing. Well, we don't, um, we don't smile too much. And we like sauna. So the way to make a Finnish guy smile actually is pretty simple. Go to the sauna with the Finnish guy and ask for more heat in Finnish. That's called Lisa Loulua. All right, all together. Lisa Loulua. One more time, you can do better. Lisa Loulua. All right? All right. Then you can make him laugh. So you'll get around in Finland just fine after this. Don't worry about it. Okay, so let's get back to, let's get serious, let's get back to today's topics. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about this um, question that is always there. What's a good framework for me? I'm talking about web frameworks. I'm going to cover that a bit. And after that, I'm going to show you what Vardin is all about. What, where Vardin signs over, over and uh, what you guys should think of when you do your web applications. So that's the story for today. So let's see. So Vardin, first of all, from Finland again. Vardin has a double meaning. It's also a word in Finnish, Finnish language. And obviously it means a reindeer. <laughs> but um, besides of that, Vardin is also a company, okay? And we have a mission. So this is what we try to do. We try to make building web applications easy, so that the end result is awesome, all right? That's what we try to do. And uh, this type of things you might come up with when you start building things with Vardin. They are web applications, business apps, dashboards, really good looking, really intuitive. So this is what people are using our products for. Also, the mobile side, web development, and you have a mobile UI, only HTML5, cool stuff. Um, we have built an ecosystem of Vardin community from zero to over 100,000 developers in five years. Uh, so the ride has been pretty awesome and uh, it's still rising. So uh, we are living uh, interesting times at the company. And uh, almost half of four to 100 companies already using Vardin for something. But where the Vardin is actually used, it's used for building web applications. Okay, I come to this in a minute. So this is the question that people always ask and think about. So what is a good web framework for me at the end? And if you go to a senior expert and ask the question, what's, what's good for me? He will give you one answer. Well, it depends. <laughs> How irritating is that? Like, but it's, it's actually true. It's really true. It makes sense. It makes a lot of sense because of, you need to understand the characteristics of the system you're building. Let's go to that. Uh, it depends, it's irritating, but if you ask, for example, a logistics expert, you know, I want to transfer boxes, and what's a good transportation vehicle for me? He will give you the same answer. It depends. <coughs> but there, here, it's common sense already. It's, you know, you can think of these things. Are you transferring small boxes, a lot of boxes, short distances, long distances, right? If you do that, you'll probably can draw a picture like this. Okay, I can do pizza deliveries with a, a motorbike and uh, big stuff with a truck. Common sense. So let's transfer this common sense to web applications. 
and web development. This is how I distinguish things in my head. So let's see if you can follow that. Uh, I want to think that in web development there is two types of things first. Either you're building a content-centric website or data-centric web application. Okay? Entirely different type of web systems here. And again, do you have a short life cycle or a long one? Are you going to build a small application, use that for one year and build a new one? Or are you going to build something for 20 years? Entirely different story again. So when you choose a web application framework or web framework, this is what happens. The abstraction level of the web framework, that is something that you have to look at. If the abstraction level is low, it fits to content-centric websites with short life cycle. And when the abstraction level goes high, it fits better for data-centric web applications in a long life cycle. So what is this abstraction level? Abstraction level is here that are you handling directly the low-level technologies like the DOM tree and the CSS and the JavaScript, or are you handling something else like abstract APIs or patterns or modules or things like that? Okay. So, again, a rough idea where things fit, okay? So Vardin is really designed and suitable for the, uh, the truck part, basically. Web applications, long life cycle. There you get the most value out of the framework like Vardin. And again, Java server faces in the middle, and of course, HTML5, raw HTML5 and JavaScript. That's just fine when you're building things like that on the corner. It fits there really good. You don't need to use Vardin for website things with short life cycle. It doesn't make any sense. All right? So, this is something I actually find pretty fun. Um, JavaScript is hands down, you know, the most awesome thing to do. Cool enhancements. It's really cool. All the, all the best things I've ever seen are done with JavaScript and they're really cool. But I wouldn't want to maintain a million lines of JavaScript for 10 years. And here are a few reasons. Uh, I don't know if you have ever tried, but this is pure JavaScript. Do you think what happens when I compare foo and not foo for MTRA? JavaScript thinks it's true. All right? Or I combine two empty arrays. What happens? I get an empty string. Or array and an object. What happens? Does it make sense? What happens? I get an object. And the other way around, of course, has to be the same. No, it's zero, actually. And uh, continues. Should be an object, right? No, it's not a number type. So what is this not a number? Is it the same thing that it's itself? No, it's not. So what is the type of? not a number. It's a number. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, just, just to I just want to make a point here, okay? JavaScript is awesome, don't get me wrong, but if you want to maintain a million lines of JavaScript, you might want to do something else with your life. So, um, Let's see if I could actually build something with a uh, high abstraction level framework for you. <coughs> so I'll do something simple coding with, with Vardin so you can see the difference. All right, let's see how this goes out. All right, so I have my Eclipse here and I have just created a simple empty Vardin application here. So, without further ado, I'll just show how it looks. Where are we? 
All right. This is the application. Hello, coding Serbia. Awesome. So in the Eclipse, it's all Java. This is what we try to do. This is high abstraction level stuff. You don't see any DOM structures, HTML or JavaScript. This is what we do. How many of you have actually implemented something with Swing earlier? Java Swing? A few hands, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so for you guys, your learning curve is zero. The, uh, the <coughs> programming model, the philosophy, the way is identical. Only Java objects and layouts. So let's, let's uh, start coding a bit something more. So I have here a few, few components that I did for, for your convenience. And I'll just use them and show how var in programming feels like and looks like on a high level. So I want to do a little application where there's some kind of a main layout. There's a menu on the left side, a few buttons there, and a few panels with some charting on the right. That's what I want to do. So let's first create the main, main layout. Mm -hmm. And I set the content to this application being the main layout. And then I create my menu. Now, here the menu takes the caption. I can say that um, Serbia rocks, of course. And, uh, and the listener, for the menu selections in this case, I want it to be this application itself. And uh, of course I have to implement the methods to actually receive the events. So I implement the menu selection listener that is coming from the menu. And let's implement the methods we need. So the menu was clicked, all right. So let's just show a notification on the screen. And uh, yeah. Can you increase the font of this? I'm not sure how the application. Oh, yeah. I tried to make it as big as possible. Can you all see at the back there? Who, don't, who doesn't see? You don't see. Come closer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope you can see that. It's uh, simple stuff. All right. Uh, yeah, let's restart the Tomcat. So for the menu, of course, I need some controls. So let's uh, add something there. Uh, at what was the menu? Yeah, at menu item. So the caption for the actual selection. This will create us buttons. So let's put that at dashboard. And the icon for the button here in this case, so I'll just use uh, something from Vardin. Fun awesome, what is bar, chart, yeah. Okay, and another menu, add menu item. Um, let's call it settings, for example. And uh, fun awesome gear, okay. So hang on, almost through. And when I have the menu, I'll just add it to my main layout. Set menu, menu, all right. And also, as I have the menu, I want to add a few panels to the right-hand side. You'll see the end result just in a minute. So I have the my panel, call it top. My panel and the caption is some awesome data here. And uh, for the top, I set the content. So I have this little utility that gives me uh, chart components. So I just use that. I'll show you the code just a minute. Data API get top chart, okay? And then I add the, uh, the top to the uh, main layout. Add panel top. Let's do another. Call it the bottom. Uh -huh. More cool stuff. I have great ideas for names for captions at the moment, I see. Bottom, 
So set content again, I'll get another chart from my data API. Get bottom chart in the main set uh, no at panel bottom. All right. Okay, what we have, I guess, I think that should do. All right, so let's see what we have on the screen. Now, now we got something on the screen actually. So on the left hand side, you can see the menu, Serbia rocks, I add the dashboard and the settings. These came out as buttons. Now it gives me a little notification, nice, nice choice man and another one as well. And the panels here took the charting in and it shows on the screen. So the only thing, you know, I want to you guys to really see here that, okay, this is the high abstraction level approach for implementing web applications. All you saw is Java. There's no HTML5 or something you saw here actually. And uh, this is how we approach the whole concept of building applications. And as you can also see here, it doesn't really make any sense to build your home pages with this kind of approach. It's really heavy. You know, it's, there's unnecessary abstraction level layers on top of just HTML or HTML table or div components that you would use on your home page. Okay? All right. So, a few examples here. What are these my main layouts? Something magical happened, obviously, there. So let's see the code for that. For example, the my main layout. This is actually pretty simple stuff. I just combine layout components from Vardin, horizontal, vertical. I put them together to get the layouting that I want. And uh, I adjust a bit how they are, you know, expanded and uh, how much space they are taking and things like that. And uh, what else I have here? The my menu, for example, here. This is pretty straightforward start, uh, stuff as well. So when I add, for example, an add menu item, I take the caption and the icon. And within this whole thing, I just create new buttons. And I say how the button is you know, constructed. I have a large button icon aligned on top, things like that. So this is the button approach to build your stuff. All right, let's, let's rush on forward. I'll break everything that I touch. So what we learned so far, just, a, just as a wrap up. Now you know how to make a happy fin, of course. And um, the selection of the best framework for you is actually the essence of being a good Java developer nowadays. Or a good Java architect. You know, it always comes down to the point where you have to choose frameworks. So the first thing you have to do is to understand where the framework fits and where it doesn't. Simple as that, but you know, keep that in mind. That is really important because that will you know, make you shine or make you fail in your work. And of course, maintaining the JavaScript, not really fun. Okay. So you saw some examples of the Vardin, Vardin programming as well, so now we skipped to, to more Vardin stuff. So what Vardin is, it's basically you can think it of as some um, um, bag of Legos, okay? You know, everyone likes Legos. Take a bunch of Legos and combine them together and get something cool. So that's what Vardin is. It's just components, nothing, nothing more. And uh, how, we, how we do the whole thing. So the server-side programming, as you saw there, Vardin is technically a servlet. All the code you write is on the server side by default. That is optimized for productivity. I think that that was pretty, pretty okay. Few codes of line, lines of code that I showed you guys and I got a pretty nice application already up and running. And also the client side as we have, we are, build, we are building that with Google Web Toolkit. More about that later. It's optimized for control, okay? When you really want to go out there and fiddle around with the DOM structure, there are cases where you have to do that and you want to do that, then we enable you to do that whenever you want and you choose to do that. Okay, but still with Java. That's where Google Web Toolkit comes into play. 
How many of you actually know about Google Web Toolkit, have used it, have heard about it? All right, quite many. In short, Google Web Toolkit is a framework where you implement your DOM structure in Java and it compiles it behind the scenes to JavaScript. All right, you don't have to do JavaScript programming there. Uh, so another example, so if you start combining these Lego bricks, you get an application on the screen. So it's a single page application, pure HTML5. There's no plugins or flash or anything there. And uh, pretty much everything you could expect from a modern web framework anyways. That's there. But the cool thing here is that it's browser agnostic. Okay? One implementation effort, then you can run your end result with all the mainstream browsers and also mobile browsers. So this is basically an option for Java guys to actually implement mobile applications as well. I think that's pretty cool. So again, the same application is running on an iPad. Yeah, it moves, you can see that it works. All right, let's look at the architecture a bit. Has to be here all the time. So when you have a Vardin application, you have two sides, of course, the server side, web server, Tomcat, for example, and the browser side, okay, whatever browser you have. So the building blocks here are, of course, the backend logic that always you have in any system, and the UI code. That's what I just wrote there, the UI code that you saw. And I was using Vardin components, the Vardin Java API, I was using that. But behind the scenes, all the components that I actually used, they have a counterpart on the browser side implemented with Google Web Toolkit and we call them widgets, okay? There can be a lot of different kind of widgets, your custom, your own, or add-ons that are extensions for Vardin. And also themes, the look and feel, more about that later. Basically the bunch of CSS that controls the look and feel of your application. And also, of course, in, in Vardin you can integrate directly on the browser level as well if you have some cool widget going on there or a component, JavaScript component, you can interact with that on the browser side. And that component can also have its own service and not even using the Vardin side. That's your cup of tea. So talking about web app application layers, these are the layers that always exist when you build any web application. Backend server, web server, the communication, and then the clients at the JavaScript part, okay? With Vardin, we require from you to write only two of these, but when you wish, you can go further and do custom stuff. This is a big, big difference. For, for example, Google Web Toolkit is a plain one. You need all these layers. They are required before you get anything on the screen. You have to do the communications yourself. You have to do the client-side implementation yourself. You have to do more layers. Pure JavaScript, same thing, more layers, okay? Oh, that's a, you can see that's just fine. So here it says that one layer versus three layers when you implement your UIs. So there's huge shavings, of course. You can cut half of your code lines, complexity, maintenance time, time to market, things like that. So this is basically the biggest value I see in Vardin when you build these uh, web applications. We minimize the code base you have to write and you have to maintain. Okay, simple. So how does it work? Really? So, example code here, a text field and a button. And I can click that. What I get on the screen. When the browser goes to the address where the Vardin application is actually running, this is what happens. The initial HTML for the first page is loaded. Also the CSS and the JavaScript that is already there for you. You can think of that Vardin loads um, client-side rendering engine in a sense, to the browser, so that when you do something on the server side and say that, hey, I have a button and I have a caption, it tells to the rendering engine what to actually do to draw them on the screen. All right, so this is the actual application. Write something, you click the button. There goes an Ajax call. 
with only the data that actually changed on the screen. This piece of call code gets called the listener method. So here we just say, yeah, okay, so a notification on the screen again with the value that came out. And the data that's going back is just at a notification on the screen. So only the chains that has to be drawn to the screen. And you can see it again, really cool, but there is a high Jonas notification there. All right. Okay, um, I took a few highlights actually uh, from Vardin. The cool things that I think are really cool and also these are the things that make you shine. Again, in all frameworks that you choose, if there's something really powerful, this will make you shine in your work. So I want to stress these, these few ones here. Yeah, the contrast is awesome. But anyway, in Vardin there is a pretty, really powerful theming engine that we call Valo. Again, a word in Finnish, it means light. So uh, this is what we do. Let's say that you have some kind of an application here. Okay, looks like this. And we know that Java guys are the people that are using Vardin, all right? They are not CSS guys. So with Valo, you can fiddle around with few variables in the beginning of your theme declaration to say how it actually behaves, how you alter the appearance. So if you set the base color to something, internally we derive that color to you know, make it 20% darker and get some border colors and things like that. And it goes throughout all the components. And the end result in this case is like this. With that set of variables, you get a different look and feel for your application. No CSS magic, so to speak. So if you have a corporate style guide that you have to follow, this approach will probably take you 90% already, and then you walk the last mile with plain CSS. How we did this? We used SAS. How many of you actually have heard, known, used SAS? Okay, quite many. That's good. That's really awesome, really powerful. Especially I like the, uh, where the word comes from, syntactically awesome style sheets. That's pretty fun. So those of you that haven't you know, heard about SAS before, it's basically a way to program your CSS files, finally. So what it does, you can have variables and functions, and these variable stuff you just draw in the Valor theming engine that we use pretty heavily. And uh, Mixins, well, they're basically objects in a sense that you can reuse in your CSS. And uh, nesting, of course, this is actually funny how, how it was you know, left out from the original CSS. It's, it's kind of there, but now we can do that. And uh, of course, you can inherit your predefined things, so make them more usable. This is pretty cool. So SAS, as it is, it's not, you know, any browser doesn't understand that, so it has to be compiled to CSS. So Vardin brings along a SAS compiler. So if you write SAS and a browser asks for a new theme, the compiler will produce it on the fly uh, to produce CSS on a development time, of course. If you, if you go to production, of course, you want to compile everything ready, so you do that. Then extendability, we call them add-ons. This is something I'm really excited about. In all frameworks, there will be a case when it's not enough for you, all right? You need to extend something. You need something more. So in Vardin, we sold it so that you can have multiple different kind of extensions, server-side component compositions, a difficult name, but I actually, all the my panel, my main layout that you saw already, they are these compositions, all right? Client-side components, do Google Web Toolkit programming, wrap that in a Vardin, uh, the way that Vardin provides you the way to wrap it as a Vardin component, things like that. And uh, you can distribute that in a single char file, drop it to all your other projects and reuse that, reuse that. And we also introduced the community marketplace, so to speak, where the community can show, share their add-ons, their extensions for Vardin. And uh, this is the Vardin directory. 
It's available online. Almost 500 add-ons already there for you. So if, you, if there's something missing from the Vardin framework itself, go to the directory, see if it's there. There's a lot of cool stuff that are usable, but doesn't make any sense to have them in the Vardin core framework in a sense. So one example here. Someone had the need for a paper stack component. So basically like this, you can drag papers and go to the next paper. Really cool component. Doesn't make any sense to have that in the Vardin core, but it's still available. So you can take that down. There's some code samples, see how they work. And uh, take it from Maven, for example. And uh, yeah. And a few of these add-ons, uh, we actually produce quite a few add-ons ourselves as well. And uh, only these three are commercial ones. The charting, the mobile extension, and something that we call the Vardin test bench, you can automate your regression tests for your UI, even on a pixel level, to see what changed. Pretty enterprisey, and it has a little price tag. But otherwise, we are talking about Apache 2.0, open source, business liberal open source here. All right. This is also something really interesting. This, uh, the mobile related. You can also go hybrid. Yeah. Okay, good. So I'll, I'll just talk faster. <laughs> All right. So one thing really cool as well, you can build hybrids with this kind of approach. In mobile development, there will be cases where you need to tolerate offline, so then you need some local storage. So you can do it with HTML5 nowadays. Um, Client-side programming always adds some complexity, but if you really need to do offline, then you have to go that way. But anyways, here's an example. We did this uh, parking ticket application. I don't know who actually came up with that idea that, yeah, we need to uh, example application where you can write parking tickets for parking violations. Maybe there was a Finnish guy, unhappy Finnish guy in a sauna on a Friday night. <laughs> but that's what it did. Uh, so let's see that. Application on the screen there. It's basically, uh, uh, what is this, uh, home page, bookmark, called. But this is a web application. There's no browser anywhere. You don't really see that it's a web application. And uh, you can just use that as a native application. Yeah, the contrast isn't that good. But let's see, here's some maps here uh, where you are. It seems that we're in Las Vegas at the moment. And uh, some time, you know, working shifts for the personnel here. And uh, native controls. And uh, let's see here. So if we go to offline, all right, we're offline at the moment. It's a web application, a server-side web application. You know, disaster might be coming our way. So you can still actually, with the hybrid program model, you can actually continue using some parts of the application. In this case, we create out the parts that are not supporting offline, but we still support the part where you create new violation tickets. And uh, let's create a ticket here. Parking on a sidewalk, and uh, let's see, take a photo of the car, there it is. We save it, and there's a little badge on the corner saying that, hey, there's one ticket on the queue at the moment. And when the connection comes up, you can reconnect, and it just says that, hey, you know, this, this got saved to, to the system. So this is, this kind of stuff you can do with the, uh, HTML5 based technologies nowadays. I think that's really cool. Uh, not going here yet. So uh, I think it was Gardner that said that it might estimate that in two, next year, 2015, over 60% of business, mobile business applications are HTML5 based. So it's this kind of stuff. So business applications are actually really dull, so to speak. You know, they're fields texts, forms, simple stuff, you don't need the graphical processing power of a native app for that. So think about the difference in one implementation effort and you get Android, <laughs> iOS and Windows phones with the same effort compared to the one where you do a native app 
for all of these platforms and maintain them. So for business applications, I think HTML5 is a really good option to start with. Start with that. If it's not enough for you, then go native and not the other way around. Okay, next thing. As Varin is a high abstraction level framework, we were able to produce cool things behind the scenes. So we, for example, introduced server push support. I'm meaning true server push here. See, So we're using the atmosphere framework. So there's web sockets, HTTP streaming, and long polling. So you can choose from these methods based on your proxy setup. So proxies are not really friends with true server push, but you can choose the way how they want to do that. So what server push is, is basically that you know, you don't do polling from the browser, but whenever there is actually something new data, it gets pushed to the browser automatically. Uh, let's see how much time I, I have. All right. Let me show this to you just quickly. I'll change this, my application that you saw already, to use push. So I actually add an annotation here. And for the bottom chart, for example, oh, let's take the, yeah, the top chart. Let's take this away. And new bottom, what, it, what was called? Yeah, get bottom thread bottom start. All right, I guess that's it. So what I did here, I removed the setting the data to the other panel, and I uh, using my custom thread that I give the panel to. Okay, when you're ready, put the data here, and the implementation is pretty simple. Just run. I call the slow backend API and then I access my UI to actually set the content. So let's see if this I got it right. So now you can see that actually the application came already, but this started waiting and then it got loaded. All right. Pretty cool, I think. So what do I still have here? Not much. Time to get started. Tutorials, uh, Eclipse plugins, you know, plugins for all the mainstream uh, um, IDEs. Just go there. And uh, of course, Maven is supported as well. I personally have a love-hate relationship with Maven, but um, if it's your cup of tea, you can use that. Uh, There's a free book, downloadable, downloadable. And uh, it's basically a full reference manual for Vardy. So just take that down and you can refer that uh, later on. So what we actually learned, we always smile, right? And uh, button is good for web apps, okay? <laughs> Productivity is the thing here. And we try to t keep Java guys out of trouble, not just touch JavaScript, not do any you know, messy stuff. We try to be on your side of the table here. We are Java guys ourselves, and I would be in trouble if I wouldn't have something like Vardin when I built some web apps. And the last one, if I, catch, if I ever catch you guys building your websites, home pages, with the high abstraction level framework like Vardin, I will do an old Finnish tradition, I'll take you behind the sauna. I, I leave it here. I leave it here for your imagination, but it's not going to be pleasant, okay? All right. Okay, that's all I got for you today. For you today, and uh, happy coding, guys, and uh, be awesome.